So now let me discuss about the irreversible anticholinesterases. Now what are the group of compounds in this particular irreversible anticholinesterases? The group of drugs in this irreversible anticholinesterases are we have organophosphates right we have organophosphates and then we have carbamates and then we have our carbamates so these are the group of drugs under this irreversible anticholinesterases now let me tell you what exactly these drugs are doing now what are these as the name itself suggests these are irreversible anticholinesterases all right that means they are irreversibly inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme right so normally what will happen is if you take the acetylcholine acetylcholine this uh, it is in the presence of enzyme choline esterase right in the presence of enzyme choline esterase this is converted into acetyl plus choline right in the presence of enzyme choline esterase the acetylcholine is converted into acetyl plus choline now now you take this particular anticholinesterases what does this anticholinesterases do this anticholinesterases will inhibit this particular cholinesterase enzyme all right this anticholinesterases will inhibit the cholinesterase enzyme now once this particular cholinesterase enzyme is inhibited now remember this acetylcholine is not converted into acetyl plus choline so the cholinesterase enzyme once it is inhibited the acetylcholine level increases right so what i want to tell you is these anticholinesterase enzymes or anticholinesterase substances they will increase the acetylcholine level within the body by inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme but the point what you have to remember is these irreversible anticholinesterases the word irreversible tells that these substances they are inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme irreversibly right they are inhibiting the cholinesterase enzyme irreversibly so the amount of acetylcholine which is increased in the body is in large quantities so you will have the excessive cholinergic effect because of these particular group of drugs now now you take this particular organophosphates now what are the group of drugs in the organophosphates is like we have malathion then parathion then ecothiophate the other drug is chlorpyrifos and we have certain nerve gases apart from this malathion parathion ecothiophate and chlorpyrifos we have certain nerve gases which are organophosphorus compounds but these are nerve gases now if you take these nerve gases which are the organophosphates they include the examples are tabun sarin and then soman right so tabun sarin and as well as soman so these are the nerve gases which are the organophosphates next you take this particular carbamates right you take this carbamates the examples of this carbamates are carbaryl and propaxor so we have two drugs one is carbaryl and the other drug is propaxor okay the other drug is the propaxor so these are the two drugs under your argano carbamates now you take most of these particular drugs right most of these drugs they are not used therapeutically most of them they are used as the insecticides only one drug which is used therapeutically is ecothiophate okay so the ecothiophate is the only substance among these irreversible anticholinesterases which is used therapeutically you take this particular ecothiophate this ecothiophate it is useful in the treatment of glaucoma 
right it is useful in the treatment of glaucoma okay that is the therapeutic use of one of the irreversible anticholinesterase and you take all these particular drugs these anticholinesterases that is mainly you take these organophosphates these organophosphates they are mainly used as insecticides right they are mainly used as the insecticides and these are the drugs which have greater potential for causing poisoning right these are the group of drugs which have greater potential for causing poisoning now now let me discuss the clinical features because of the poisoning due to organophosphates now the basic principle what you have to remember is the anticholinesterases what are they doing they are increasing the acetylcholine levels so the symptoms of anticholinesterase poisoning are simply the extension of the pharmacological action of the acetylcholine because what are these substances doing these substances are increasing the acetylcholine so what will be the clinical features they are nothing but simply the extension of the pharmacological action of the acetylcholine now in case of this organophosphorus poisoning now let me tell you what will be the clinical features right so let me discuss the clinical features right let me discuss the clinical features due to organophosphorus poisoning okay so the basic principle what you have to remember is it is just extension of the pharmacological action of the acetylcholine now you take the action of the acetylcholine on the pupil what it will do to the pupil remember this acetylcholine will cause pupillary constriction in the sense the individual will have meiosis by the action of the cholinergic nervous system or by the action of the acetylcholine now when these drugs or when in case of organophosphorus poisoning what will happen is there is excessive cholinergic action so due to which these individuals they will have pinpoint pupil right these individuals they will have pinpoint pupil that is one of the very important sign of the organophosphorus poisoning next now you see the other important action you take these cholinergic drugs right you take these cholinergic drugs cholinergic drugs what do they do there to the secretions of the individual remember the cholinergic drugs will increase the secretions of an individual all right the cholinergic drugs will increase the secretions of the individual now for example you take the salivary secretion right for example you take the salivary secretion what does acetylcholine will do to the salivary secretion acetylcholine will increase the salivary secretion so in the presence of anticholinesterases where the acetylcholine levels are increased what do you think will happen in case of organophosphorus poisoning in organophosphorus poisoning there is excessive salivation right there is excessive salivation not only excessive salivation you take the lacrimal gland even the lacrimal gland is also stimulated in greater extent so that is the reason why these individuals will also have lacrimation excess lacrimation so what i want to tell you is in these patients with organophosphorus poisoning all the secretions are grossly increased like salivation is increased lacrimation is increased and not only that even these individuals they will have profuse sweating right these individuals they will have profuse sweating right next now you take the effect of the acetylcholine on the respiratory tract right in the respiratory tract we have a smooth muscle the effect of the acetylcholine on the smooth muscle is it will cause the smooth muscle contraction right it will cause smooth muscle contraction now what does your cholinergic nervous system do when it is excessively activated that will result in what is called as bronchoconstriction okay so remember this point when acetylcholine levels are greatly increased in case of organophosphorus poisoning there is more severe bronchoconstriction right so in op poisoning the other important effect is 
bronco constriction that will be manifested in the form of v's next you take the effect of the acetylcholine on the gastrointestinal tract it will increase the gastrointestinal motility so in organophosphorus poisoning where the acetylcholine levels are grossly increased so the gastrointestinal motility grossly increases and that will be manifested in the form of diarrhea right that will be manifested in the form of diarrhea next the another important thing is you take the effect of the acetylcholine on the detrusor muscle of the urinary bladder the acetylcholine will cause the contraction of the detrusor muscle of the urinary bladder so in case of organophosphorus poisoning where the acetylcholine levels are grossly increased there is excessive stimulation of the detrusor muscle and that will result in excess urination right so there is also increased urination by this cholinergic crisis next the other important thing is you take the effect of acetylcholine on the heart right you take the effect of the acetylcholine on the heart the acetylcholine will reduce the heart rate of the individual all right the acetylcholine will reduce the heart rate of the individual now in case of organophosphorus poisoning the acetylcholine levels are grossly increased so if you see the effect on the heart it will suppress the heart rate so thereby in these individuals with organophosphorus poisoning they will have what is called as bradycardia right they will have what is called as bradycardia and not only that what will happen to the blood pressure of the individual is the blood pressure of the individual reduces so these individuals will have hypotension and ultimately now because of the hypotension what will happen is the cerebral perfusion reduces and because this particular cerebral perfusion is reduced these individuals will land up in coma right these individuals will land up in coma so these are the clinical features in patients with the organophosphorus poisoning so the features are the pinpoint pupil increased salivation increased lacrimation increased sweating bronchoconstriction diarrhea and urination bradycardia hypotension and as well as coma right so let me shortly revise what i have discussed anticholinesterases we have two groups organophosphates and as well as the carbamates the organophosphates most of them they are used as the insecticides and uh, their preferable uh, consumption will lead to what is called poisoning and uh, most of them they are used as the insecticides except one particular drug which is used therapeutically that is ecothiophate which is used in the treatment of glaucoma whereas you take the nerve gases the nerve gases are tabun sarin and as well as soman and then you have organo carbamates the examples include the carbaryl and as well as propoxor now in these patients with the organo phosphate poisoning the acetylcholine levels grossly increases why because these substances they will inhibit the enzyme choline esterase once they inhibit the enzyme choline esterase the acetylcholine is not converted into acetylpase choline and that will result in increase in the acetylcholine levels and the clinical features if you take in organophosphorus poisoning there will be pinpoint pupil increased salivation lacrimation and as well as sweating there will be very severe bronchoconstriction diarrhea excessive urination there will be bradycardia hypotension and finally the individual will land up in coma right so these are the effects of the organophosphorus poisoning